I just want to um, just share this verse, Proverbs 18, 21, before we pray. Uh, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Right? Um, in the Proverbs 18, verse 21, so here is this principle or truth, which um, which we see, you know, in many other places in Scripture. Um, but here is, um, you know, very clearly about um, the, the power of the spoken word, right? Um, well, the the world is using it, right? They call it affirmations and um, and so on. But we as believers, you know, we uh, we see that it's the truth in Scripture that death and life are in the power of the tongue, right? So two extreme uh, eventualities, no? two ex extreme outcomes. One is death, the other one is life. And, uh, and this verse ties it directly to the fact that it's in the power of the tongue, right? Um, it's in speaking, it's in declaring. And uh, the second part of the verse says that those who love it will eat its fruit. Love what? Whatever the outcome is, right? And if you're going to be, if you want uh, the the outcome, which is life, then we ought to be declaring life, and uh, we will. It says, uh, you know, will, you will eat its fruit, which means that you will partake, or you will have the, uh, you know, you will have the uh, pleasure of having partaken or being able to partake of that outcome. Of that fruit, right? So let's, um, yeah. So let's uh, let's just make some declarations today, okay? Um, you know, uh, I don't know if you if you guys use the church app. Right? This has so many app, uh, declarations based on the Word of God. Uh, everything has its foundations in Scripture, right? So, so we'll we we'll just make some declarations, okay? So I mean, you you just have your mics muted, but. You know, you can repeat it with, with me, right? So let's, here we go, right? Jesus has given me the right to use his name, to act on his be behalf, to do what he wants done. In his name, I cast out demons and heal the sick. Jesus has given me authority over all the power of the enemy. And nothing will by any means hurt me. Okay, here's another one. I have received power because the Holy Spirit has come upon me. And I am a witness for Jesus Christ. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he empowers me to heal, deliver, and set the captives free. He who has called me and anointed me is God. The anointing of the Holy Spirit on my life destroys demonic yokes and removes demonic bondages off of people. Okay, here's one about blessing, right? I am blessed with every blessing that comes from God. I share and enjoy all of the blessings God has for his people. I am blessed in all that I set my hands to. The Lord teaches me to prosper and directs my ways. I walk in obedience to God and his blessings flow like a stream that never goes dry. Victory comes to me like the waves that roll on the seashore. Okay, last one. I am strong and very courageous. I am bold like a lion. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. The Lord is my confidence and security. Amen. Praise God. All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the power of your word. We thank you that your word is uh, spirit and it's life. 
And Father God, we choose to speak your word. We choose to declare your word based on your promise here, Lord, in Proverbs 18, 21, that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And so, God, in faith and by faith, we have declared your word that we are blessed, O oh God, that fear has no place in us, God. And uh, yes, Father God, we have declared that your anointing breaks every yoke. We have declared that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing. We have declared, O oh God, that um, you're the one who leads us. You're the one who anoints us. And we are full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. And yes, God, we, we thank you. That, uh, we commit today into your mighty hands. We pray that you would lead us by your word and spirit. You let your word continue to strengthen us, Lord. Whatever seems to be weak, O oh Father God, in us, Lord, let your word strengthen. Lord, whatever is causing death in us, God, whatever is causing, um, Lord, damage and decay and destruction in us, in the mighty name of Jesus, let it be removed right now. Let it be broken right now. Let it be pulled away, let it be taken away right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I just speak, uh, we speak life, we speak uh, resurrection and life in the mighty name of Jesus. For your word declares, Lord, that great is your power that is at work in us according to the power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Yes, Lord, we thank you in, in accordance with your resurrection power that is at work in us, Lord. Lord, we take authority and we declare your word over our own lives, God. We thank you, Father God. Thank you for leading us. We thank you for releasing life, Lord, into our lives, O Master. We thank you that you have come to give us life and life in its abundance, in its fullness. And so, God, since that is your desire, Lord, we make that our desire as well. We come in alignment with your will. We come in alignment with your desire. And we say amen to that, Lord. We thank you. We give you all the praise, even as we commit this whole day into your mighty hands. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Right. So let's um, let's continue with uh, discipleship and small groups ministry. Okay. So last class we um, I think we came to. Let me just check. Yeah, uh, we were checking. Uh, we came to uh, about life groups, the kind of uh, life life groups that can be there. Um, the possibilities, the unlimited possibilities of cell groups, and right? that is what we looked at. And um, today we're going to continue with that, and we're going to look at uh, you know some some things that can help us in our formation of cell groups. Right? Um, so we last class we ended with the unlimited possibility of cells. Um, let's just review that, and um, I'll just take a moment to put the notes up. <clears throat> Okay, right. So we can have different kinds of cell groups, right? Uh, and I think uh, some of you have shared, right? I think Aaron was sharing about the area cell group, the colony. So people living in the neighborhood, you know, that could be a, a cell group, and uh, and you know, um, working, working, yeah, business place, uh, log, maybe it's a workplace, maybe it's an office. You know, there can be a cell group there, and uh, we've heard so many. Um, you know, uh, so many good things that happen um, uh, from these cell groups, which happen in the office, which take place during the maybe the lunch break. Um, it's a very short time that they meet. Maybe you know, half an hour is the maximum that they will be able to spare. But um, a lot of a uh, lot of good things. Believers being edified, even people you know being curious and coming to know the Lord, um, and also many answered prayers. And so on, right? So, so here's a listing: different kind of uh, cell groups. So it need not be always people living in the same area. It can be a youth cell group, right? It can be only youth, maybe teenagers, maybe people in their twenties. Uh, it can be it can be just guys, you know, just men, or maybe single women, right? Uh, girls only. And uh, there's a lot more freedom that way to discuss challenges, to discuss issues. Um, you know, maybe uh, because it's all guys, you know, you just open up and share. And you know, hey, this is this is where one area where I'm struggling with, and so on. So there's a lot more freedom to express, open up, right, uh, and share. So 
you know maybe it's a guy all guys men cell group uh, maybe it's a cell group which is couples right um, married couples and uh, and so on right families so we we could have different types or different kinds of cell groups and and the thing is that it always helps us because uh, uh, these kinds of cell groups uh, are very very effective right because people are gathered together because they feel comfortable in that cell group right? they are challenged they are inspired but at the same time you know they they feel comfortable right so and this is what the lord jesus also when he commanded the disciples to go uh, the 12 to see when he sent them uh, into the towns uh, you know he sent them with this instruction to go to the house of uh, israel Okay, to focus, to concentrate on the house of Israel. He also told them, you know, do not go, right? Don't go in the way of Gentiles and so on. And uh, so this is what we call as, uh, you know, people group thinking in the sense. There, there, is, um, there are uh, people and they have certain commonalities in terms of culture, language, and, and so on, ethnicity. And, um, and it's, it's so much easier to bridge uh, to build bridges, right? So when the, suppose there is a cell, cell group, and where you know people are gathered together because of common interests, because of common uh, likes, because of uh, you know maybe certain other factors like age, um, and maybe uh, maybe because of their uh, you know their occupation, right? Uh, like businessmen's cell group or you know, working professionals cell group so it breaks down a lot of walls there's a lot of commonality and so in order to even to understand accept um, um you know the truth of scripture it becomes so much easier right um so that you know that is not to say that okay uh, you know all such people will be to, uh, you know we, we're talking about cell group and it's it's we're not talking about of course the church the body of christ is definitely you know uh, transcends uh, culture which means goes beyond culture goes beyond language and so on but uh, but these are uh, important factors right um, so these are you know important characteristics because you know if you look at any church there there is uh, i mean at least there is a common language right you might have translations and so on and to you know to bridge that gap in a particular service but uh, you see that there is a certain commonality, right? So maybe two languages, and uh, you know you 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 bridge that gap of people not knowing a language. Um, culturally, also, right? Uh, so you have multicultural, multi-ethnic churches, right? And so it helps if a cell group, uh, uh, you know, is is gathered together with some commonalities. But of course, it is just a suggestion, right? Uh, it is. It, it should be to unite rather than to divide. Okay, so that's the thing. Always the unity of the spirit uh, is to be kept in mind, and it's not to divide people, but it's really to unite people to make make the cell group stronger, right? Okay. So, uh, some thoughts about youth cell group, right? If it's uh, young people. Again, we are saying that there are, there is the youth cell group will have 12 people, 12 youth, 12 young people. Um, it's best to have, you know, girls meeting together, guys meeting together, uh, because uh, it, one, there is uh, freedom to be who you are. You're not trying to be someone else. And uh, especially, you know, young people at that age, um, a, 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 you know, the, a, so to they're seeking identity, seeking approval, and so on. So, uh, it's it's best if it's this way. Um, so here's a format. You can go through it later. I'm just going to, you know, it's a similar to um, the other format of the life group that we had. I mean, uh, the cell group that we looked at. You know, there is a time to maybe there's some snacks, there's some uh, icebreaker. You talk about the vision, then the cell topic, and then you know if there are. Um, unbelievers then there is a gospel presentation and so on so um the all leaders need to be trained 
Trotsky. That's that's one thing that you need to under that we need to understand that um, it's it's good to train the leader and appoint the leader. It's important, right? So that the training in the training, the leader understands the vision. In the training, the un leader understands what one should do, what one should not do, right? What is the scope of the uh, cell group? In the sense, what is the cell group really uh, setting out to do? What are the boundaries, etc. Right? So there needs to be a formal training. A formal training in the sense, it, it need not be, you know, a very long training, but it should be something where um, the cell group, uh, I mean, the potential cell group leader also is able to ask some questions, clarify doubts, right? And uh, they're clear about what needs to be done. And so, and there is a formal, you know, appointing that happens. Um, so with this, you know, you, you avoid a lot of other problems, okay? Uh, and the cell group leader need not come back to the leadership, you not know, to the pastor or each and everything, every, every time, you know, uh, what should I do for this? What should I do for that? No, the training will take care of that. And if there's some kind of a material or resource that is given so that they can check, like, like a manual, then that will be helpful. Okay. Um, so, yeah, youth leaders uh, also, you know, the same way you train them as well. Okay. So, here's this uh, cell health. You know, we talked about the cell group health, the health of the cell group. Okay. So, we talked about it in an earlier session where we saw that uh, a cell group needs to be a wholesome, holistic cell group where there is equal emphasis on community, fellowship, outreach, right? Um, looking, connecting with God, right? In terms of prayer, worship, and so on. Uh, and also raising up leaders, the, the cell group multiplying, right? Um, itself. So there needs to be an equal emphasis. Okay, so... How do I evaluate this? Right. So here's a tool. Here's a simple tool for those of you who are in live groups. You could you could even consider using this. Right. Um, this is uh, this is quite an interesting tool. Okay. And it 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 asks some very interesting questions. Right. It tracks some uh, some of those things that happen in a live group uh, to look at the frequency of it. You know, how often are these things happening? Are these things happening at all? So it will help us. It will be really helpful. Okay. So this is developed by Randall Naiba and Jim Egli. Um, so uh, let's look at it, right? So first thing is upward. You know, what is the cell group leader and also the group's relationship with God to evaluate that, assess that? Secondly, inward, right? What is uh, inward meaning? You know, first is upward, of course, vertically. So uh, one's relationship with God. Uh, inward, meaning one's relationship with uh, those inside of the cell group, right? With with one another. Okay, so in terms of fellowship, in terms of friendship, uh, so it assesses that, evaluates that. You know, is it is it getting better? Or is it getting worse? Right, and so we need to use some method to find out if it's getting better. Uh, it's it's it, it can't be just okay. I I think it's better. I feel it's better. Right, uh, I feel it's uh, getting better, whereas it need not be. Right, it's just our, uh, it's just our assumption that it's getting better. Right, so upward, inward, then outward. Outward is, okay, uh, what is the life group or the cell group doing in order to reach out others and others who do not know Christ? Now, what is the passion level of uh, those in the cell group towards the world outside? You know, because a cell group can actually get very, very comfortable uh, with just with inward looking, you know, just looking inwards, community, building friendship, and forgetting uh, the Great Commission. So, okay, outward looking. Then forward looking, meaning, okay, now are we actually doing something in order to raise up leaders or people in the life group? Are they interested? Are they taking that step to raise to 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 
you know to become sons to become um, fathers and mothers right in order to lead others right? are they growing are they maturing so that they can read, uh, lead others as well and can they can uh, can they can there be something to train them to raise them up to identify these other people so why don't we intentionally do something to raise them up as leaders right so so this this is the four direction if you want to call it that right upward inward outward and forward and it can be useful uh, a useful tool in a cell group and i think it's it'll be a useful f tool for a church itself because the, you know the cell is a small part of the church right? it's like a, a, the term you know uses like a microcosm meaning that Okay, this is a working model of how a church should be right, in the smallest sense. So you have this and then, you know, you can maybe use that to assess the health, health of the church also. Okay. Okay. So here's a questionnaire and then there's some, you know, you can go through that in your notes. Uh, how about how to score and all that, right? There is a score which is there for every response. The leftmost side would be, would start with one and the rightmost column would have scores of five. Okay, so, you know, upward connecting. For example, you know, it says, how many days each week do you pray for other members of your cell group? Okay, very pertinent question. How many minutes does your cell group spend in worship in its meetings? How many minutes do you spend in devotional time with the Lord on an average day? Okay, so this is individually. Right? So it is there, you know, 20 minutes plus or 40, 46, 45 minutes plus. Um, how many minutes does your cell group spend in prayer in its meeting? So one is individual, the other one is as a group, uh, corporately. Then how often does your cell group see wonderful and miracle, uh, miraculous answers to? prayer so the whole thing is focusing on relationship with the lord individually and corporately okay so okay so you assign some scores you can say okay how many days uh, do you pray for them maybe you know i don't pray at all let's say you know that can be a choice which means the point given to that it's one okay so based on that here are some evaluations Okay, um, I hope you can see this. So if the score is 17 or higher, okay, it's it's okay. Everybody's doing well. Keep praying, which means there is the prayer life of the church, of the cell group is pretty strong, right? Both individually and also corporately, you know, people are praying, people are praying on their own, people are worshiping God on their own and also as a group. So it, it's strong. Okay. Um, if it's below that, right, if it is 16 and below, then, uh, you know, it, it is above the danger zone, but it could be higher. Okay. So, which means that, uh, um, you know, if they're, they're just barely you know, doing it, it's on and off, right? But it, they can always grow. There's always scope for growth, right? So, this is what uh, Jim, Jim Eagley says, um, you know, no prayer, no power. And uh, yeah. So this is this is what he said. No, no prayer, no power, little prayer, uh, you know, little power, lots of prayer, lots of power. Okay. So the importance of prayer, the importance of being with the Lord. Right? And uh, and we looked at that, no, like the the reason the or the Lord Jesus chose uh, people, calling them apostles, calling them as disciples, is so that he can be with them. They can be with him and that he may send them out. Okay, we saw that. It was very clear. The purpose is that they might be with him and that he might send them out. Okay, so, so this being with him, spending time with him is very important so that he can send them out. Okay. Then... Okay, so all this evaluation, so it, it, it'll help us, okay, maybe we need to make some changes. You know, we are spending a lot of time planning the food and, you know, uh, get-togethers and, and all that, but maybe we need to, it's time to 
uh, increase our time together in prayer or our time alone in prayer, uh, our time praying for one another. And I, we need to do more. So, you know, we can talk about that. We can encourage one another to pray more. Right? So many things can happen. Right? Then, and the second thing is inward, which means uh, first we saw was upward. Second one is inward, which means you know building community, you know building fellowship, friendship, uh, getting to know one another uh, in the group. You know, so um, you can trust, you can share, uh, you can carry one another's uh, you know burdens. Um, so pray for one another and so on. Right. So so here are some questions again. How many times uh, does your cell group meet how many times in a month you know in a four week time span how many times does the cell group meet it's a it's a very important question you know are they they're not meeting at all they're just meet meeting once in once in four weeks right so the frequency of meeting also helps right um when we say frequency we are saying how many times right so um the, the frequency of meeting helps the group uh, so that they can you know, get to know one another at a personal level, uh, understand each other's struggles, challenges, help one another, pray for one another, and so on. Okay, so so it's it's it has a bearing. Okay, then how many fun activities, how many parties has your cell group enjoyed together in the past three months? And I said, okay, they are just meeting for spiritual purposes. For you know, um, like what happens is like, you know. Uh, what 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 we've seen or what we've observed is that um, it's you know even during the leisure activities you know like a game or uh, maybe just going for a walk or you know in or just sitting around uh, you know around the dinner table or during a meal time that is when people open up people share. Right? and uh, uh, maybe it's it's a uh, some activity you know. So during such times, you learn about the other person you know, in a in a sport. You know, you're playing a sport, you're playing some game, uh, some activity. You learn about the person. You learn how competitive the other person is. You you learn certain things which you do you may not learn uh, otherwise. Right? You get to know about the person. And inward looking is about getting to know, building stronger friendships and strengths. You know, interests. You know, what is that person interested in? Right. What are the person's strengths? What are the person's weaknesses? Right. Uh, so you you get to observe, you get to know all this um, when you have some activities apart from the cell group meeting, right? Um, like uh, some of the cell groups that I've seen here at uh, APC, you know, the the minute someone's in trouble, right, especially during the COVID time, um, families just you know the entire family was unwell, right? Uh, Mother, mother, father, children, they're all unwell. Um, or yeah, and there's nobody to help. And then so the cell group, you know, came together to help them, came together to serve, came together to, you know, just provide food, uh, and so on. So this happened because they had a strong bond, right? They had a strong bond, they knew each other, uh, and so on. They they enjoyed, you know, being with each other and uh, they so they, they helped one another as well, right? Okay. Then the other thing, other question is, how many times have you invited cell group members to your home or a restaurant for a meal in the past two months? You know, um, so you know, have you had a cup of tea with them outside of your cell group meeting? So these are things. These are small things, but these are helpful things, right? Um, uh, and maybe you know this. So this would really help the cell group to become stronger. Okay. So we might think, okay, what is the you know, what is the big deal in this? There are some people who are very, uh, you know, who are people friendly. Like right? they they like meeting people, they like being with people, they enjoy talking to people. Um, there are there are also you know temperamentally others who who may not necessarily you know enjoy being with people or talking to people. Yeah, they do, but um, you know for them it it becomes a big effort. To do that, right? So these are areas by which uh, these are things that we can change. Okay, say okay, I need to grow in this. You know, it's like 
I don't spend that much time with the cell group members uh, outside of the cell group meeting. So can I do something? Can I plan? Uh, yes, you know, maybe time is a rare commodity, you know, in the sense, uh, you, you don't have much time, you have work and you have other things uh, crowding your life, you know, maybe there are young children and so you, know, you need to take care of them, all that is there. But can I plan and uh, my day or week in such a way so that I can spend some time you know, with the cell group members outside of the cell group meeting? Right? Maybe meet them for a cup of tea, uh, you know, maybe have a meal with them. And so, you know, or plan some activity, you know, go on a picnic, families going on a picnic or, or you know, like we have some of the youth cell groups and these guys would go for a, for some drive or a trek, uh, you know, uh, to the mountains and, you know, and hills nearby. And so th this helps bond, build friendships. Okay. Then how often do your cell group members sit together in Sunday worship? So we see that, you know, some of the, you know, youth uh, or the, you know, the men, young men cell group. So we see that they, you know, they serve in church together, they attend church together uh, and so on. So this is also an indicator. How often do you communicate with cell members by phone, email, cards, or letter in order to encourage them? Okay. So all these things help build community. Okay, so we, we may not have thought about it. We may not have, we may think that, okay, these are simpler things. Uh, I want to be, you know, spiritually on fire, you know, just share the word and teach the word and so on. Yes, very, very important. We should not let go of that. Uh, also, this is very important right? It will help build community. Okay. Third one, outward looking, outward focus, reaching the loss. So, well, maybe the church, our well, cell group has upward focus. Maybe the cell group has inward focus. What about the outward focus? Okay. So some questions here, how often does your group take time in its meetings to pray for those who do not yet know Christ? You know, Praying, interceding for others, for the lost. Maybe in as neighbors, maybe as friends, families, members who do not know Christ. Uh, so what happens when when the cell group does that? So they become sensitive. You know, they receive the heart of God. Um, they they realize the burden that the Lord has for the lost. Okay, and uh, they get passionate about the lost as well. So praying, praying for opportunities to share, um, and so on. Right. So, how many days each week do you pray for the salvation of unbelievers? How many parties, fun events has your group done in the past that were targeted to appeal to non-Christians? Right. When a visitor attends your cell group, how often are they followed up with a phone call, note, or visit? Okay. Does your cell group have a clear, dated goal for when it will grow? To 12 members. Let's say, um, you know, there, it is only the leader and maybe three other members right now in the cell group. You know, um, so the cell group, is there a plan? Okay, by the end of the year, you know, we'd like to grow to 12 people. Of course, it is it is God who sets things up. You know, we can go visit other, we can do things in the natural, right? Visit, call, invite people from church to be part of the cell group. Um, so, but is there an intention like that? It is there a desire like that, right? Okay, so that is the outward focus. Then, um, then the forward focus would be multiplying leaders. Okay, so how many people or couples are being actively trained as cell leaders, right? So intentionally training them because there are people who are gifted or people who have a, a passion or a desire or have a heart to to nurture others, right? Who have a heart to disciple others. So are, have they been identified? Have they been, or have they been invited to be trained? Is there a process for training? Now, these are questions to ask, right? Okay. Uh, what percentage of your group members do you expect to lead a group at some point in future? So there are 12 uh, people in the cell group, for example, and how many of them do you expect you know to start other cell groups uh, can all have the potential at some point you know maybe are they gifted in in uh, god has graced them so they can start a cell group on their own you know have, have you thought about it 
um, how often do you uh, okay what percentage of youth adults in your group do you involve in leading parts of the cell meeting okay so delegating responsibilities you know are you doing everything on your own are you or are you delegating responsibilities to others as well so that they they grow okay how often do you do your prayers for yourself include a prayer for the multiplication of leaders and how many individuals or couples in your group do you expect to go through cell leaders training in the next year okay so these are things which would help with the forward focus multiplying leaders raising up leaders identifying leaders in the group okay so you see it's a very uh, very wholesome approach uh, wholesome emphasis on connecting to god upward focus inward focus community um, it is also you know outward focus evangelism and it's also forward focus where it's leadership development or developing leaders so it's a very helpful assessment a very helpful tool um, that one can use in the cell group okay so so you see that it is you know we we've, we've we've looked at one section we've covered one section so you see that it's very different from maybe a care cell meeting or a cottage prayer meeting or a home uh, group meeting so we are here there is individual attention this individual growth and development um, to be a disciple to be a leader right so so that is the intention right to to build uh, or to enable empower disciples to become ministers and leaders right so that is the that is the whole process so um so this next section that we are going to see talks about training the person right so the first section was about of course introduction to cell group ministry uh, introduction to cell church um, and what should be the vision what should be the focus um, you know and some of the work, some of the details we looked at you know what can happen in a cell group meeting uh, how many people what do we do uh, how long does the cell group happen what kinds of cell groups and all that we looked at so then now the second session second section is about preparing a person in the or people in the cell group to be leaders or becoming a cell leader so if let's say a person has potential to be a leader and that person has been serving or maybe taking turns to lead the cell group um, now if if we feel that okay this person has the heart this person has the desire uh, definitely they can be groomed and trained to be cell leaders so that they can start you know as a couple they start their own cell group or maybe as an as a individual that person can start his or her own cell group so they need to be prepared they need to be trained okay so this section deals with that okay preparing to become a cell leader it has three steps like some general instructions and then preparing to be a cell leader and raising up um, you know disciples reproducing so these are the three sections uh, like i said and then we are looking at the second section step two right okay um so before we go further just wanted to ask any any questions uh in you know in whatever we have shared so far about cell groups any questions um any doubts or some things that you have you know maybe noticed in your cell group some difficulties challenges we can talk about that right so anything at all so um so what has your experience been in leading a a group you know have you tried leading a cell group uh any can you share any experiences like some challenges faced or anything that uh, you know some some difficulties right in leading a cell group and from whatever we have shared so far uh, what has been your experience in it um anyone uh 
um, I think some of you shared that you were part of cell group. Like Thomas, you you shared you know, that you were part of a. Um, so you didn't have opportunity to. Uh, I think initial days, we can believe you were in, you were part of a cell group, right? Or a, is that what you said? Anyway. I I forget what you were mentioning, whether you were part of a cell group or. Something you said. After I said uh, path of cell group. That time I was uh, n- uh, new in Christ. That the uh, born again time. Mm. This is part of the cell group. Okay. So anything that you noticed, any challenges? You know, I know, I know you must have been taking it in all in. You know, whatever was being taught. But then, um, looking back at you know these things, these characteristics. Um, anything that you can compare and say, okay, maybe this was some challenge, or this was not there, or this was already in place. Anything like that that you can share? You know, like maybe raising up leaders. Um, you know, did the cell group help with that, or? Um, you know, in terms of building community, like building strong relationships and friendships, did anything happen? You know, it it may not have been stated, right? But it would have happened naturally, or it may not have happened. So, so those are some things where you're able to identify some things. Um, so that was my question. The thing is, uh, the time uh, I didn't know anything. Just uh, going and listening the word, ten and twelve, eleven, fifteen people, one house. So I couldn't notice too much because uh, we used to enjoy the word. We don't know the leadership, the hierarchy, anything. We don't know anything. Just be going and sitting there, uh, listening the word. We couldn't able to notice. But when uh, youths are gathering, I can notice they are more concentrated about the. Uh, uh, fun activities rather than the work. It's quite difficult to handle the word among the youngsters because they like to be enjoy the time more than uh, learning something. So somewhere that has to be managed. That's what I noticed. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. And. Uh... Yeah, I think the other person was Aaron. Aaron, how is it like in your life, in your cell groups, like these three or four cell groups that you're part of, um, these four things that we saw, no, inward, upward, inward, outward, forward. Um, do you notice all four or some things that are not there? Um, you know, some things that, that can, you know, that has scope for improvement. Uh, what is it? Thing that you noticed. I mean, you can put it in the chat also. Um, like four different cell groups. So I think one cell group you said uh, the number was almost 40, right? Uh, almost 40 people coming together. Uh, I forget the details. Um, I don't know which one it is, like the, the colony cell group, or then the other one was a small group which is your friends. So like these four elements of, um, you know, inward, upward, outward, forward, you know, do you see that, uh, you know, do you see that pattern, you know, in the cell groups? I'm sure each cell group would have a different thing, right? Maybe your... uh, um, Only in church cell group, okay. So what is it that you noticed in the church cell group? Let let me just uh, put out those four things that will help. Okay, first we said it was upward. Okay, so upward focus. Uh, prayer focusing on God, inward 
so that is community friendship right um, okay then we said um, uh, outward putting it on the chat outward so it's evangelism outreach then forward so forward which is uh, um, raising up leaders leaders from the group right. yeah so uh, so you've put up they are rooted in God's word yes um, that, that is great uh, but I'm just talking about these four areas mm, mainly, you know, like, okay, so which means they are rooted in God's word. So, you know, that upward focus is there, right? When it comes to sharing um, the content and it's, it's very strong. Um, what about the other three? Like in terms of friendship and fellowship, do people know each other? In terms of evangelism, you know, do people reach out? Um, is there prayer? Or, you know, are people from the group, are they being raised up as leaders? You know, or is the vision shared? Or is that, is that encouragement given? Um, I'm not finding fault, but I'm just saying, you know, uh, these things actually are healthy um, for the cell group. So have you noticed those kind of things uh, in the cell group? Okay, so um, rooted in God. So what you're saying when you say I noticed only in church cell group is that, okay, uh, you saw these elements in the, uh, or these characteristics in the church cell group, but not in the other cell groups, right? Okay. Okay. Fine. So we'll take a break and then we'll, uh, we'll come back and, and discuss further, right? We'll take a break now. 